Yes, your maximum profits are forfeit because you lose control of the trade. So it's like this, we, we draw a cycle, right? So I'm going to make this line here and there's two lines of this. On this side exists trigger points. On this side exists a cycle. Prior to making a cycle, so this is going to be C-Y-C-L-E, like what you'd have that's more advanced than a cycle is you'd have trigger points that are, that are going to happen before a cycle is created. Once this cycle is created, your trigger points have already triggered. So if the cycle has been created, you know your trigger points have already gone and left. The bus has already left. Your trigger points have already moved. In order to make a cycle happen, you have to go and hit a hold level, either here or here or here. So you have to hit some type of hold level. And then once you hit your hold, so I'm not going to put an H, I'm going to put a number one. So once you've hit your hold, you're going to create your number two, which is your trend. Okay. So this number two, what you are doing is you're dissecting these two pieces of a cycle combined to see it inside of here. Okay. So let me take some of this off the screen and draw this piece of it now. So, so you have a cycle that's created. Number one is hit. Number two is hit. So this could possibly be your number one. 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 There's, there's, a, there's a marquee of potential that could be your number one here. Okay. Once that number one holds, like right now, this could be the hold level. And that is the number one. We haven't created the number two yet. The number two will get created once we break this trend. That will give you the first hold level being attacked, whether it's here or whether it's here, which gives you your number two. So that will be the moment that number two is created. So your trigger points exist inside of number one, right? So inside of number one, there's a whole world of possibilities that happen because number one is saying like, okay, we have a hold level and somewhere inside of this move, there's going to be a hold level that holds this move. So inside of that number one, you are going to have trigger points and you are going to have targets. So in order to reach your actual number one, that will create your number two off of the hold level because number two will be created here or number two will be created here. Oh, sorry. Actually, it's right here, this level here. That's where your number two will be created because that's where your trend will get created. If it touches like this, like if it goes there, it creates this to this. That's your number two. Your trigger points exist prior to number two developing. Your trigger points exist in number one because number one is a target. Okay, so a hold level is going to be hit and held over time. What does that mean? That means it's a target. So if that target hits and holds, if that, if that hold level hits and holds, right, like this or like this, you're going to have a trigger that confirms number one. So when number one confirms, it's off of a trigger that lives inside of here. This is a trigger, right? So number one confirms off of a trigger. So then if we go back here and look at this move, see how number one, this is number one. What confirms number one? Okay, so we can go back in here and we can say, oh, look, the trend we have on the three or the five minute, this can confirm that number one. When this breaks, so it's not a three minute, it's a five minute, okay? So we're going to draw and, and go back here and we're going to say, okay, we know how we made the trigger points, 15 minutes to 15 minutes. Let's look at the time, 1017. Okay, so we have 1017. So this will hard confirm 13 minutes, it will be opening over top, which is likely already hard confirming a smaller time frame, right? So then we can go accumulation like this. We can go accumulation, come on, to accumulation right here. And uh, that's going to be a different color right here. And we'll just make this one yellow for this example. And we can even go to the three minute and say, okay, you have this to this, which is already broken and it's already in its second cycle here. So you have, and we'll make this one a different color. We'll make this one green. So green is our three minute in this scenario. Yellow is our five minute and purple is our 15. We're breaking the five minute now. So, so right now, in two minutes, the five minute can confirm, which means your, 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 your number one is being developed right now. So this is the number one of the cycle, which should also be your trigger point if you're in a short from here. So if you're in a short from here, and, and this is the three minute. So 1021 in, I believe this should be 18. Yeah, so this is 18. So if we just hold this price for three more minutes, we've confirmed the five, the three, and are developing the 15, meaning that number one is being developed right now. This is all trigger points before number two can happen. So at a maximum, this trade, Pat, you should be, if you were still in it, this is how you'd look at it. And you'd say, okay, here's my trigger points intersecting with timeframes. If we hold sideways for a few more minutes, 
I should exit this trade because a number one is being developed inside of a cycle, which is just a small micro cycle on another time frame. Yeah, mind you, like this is just a small cycle. It could come all the way up here and then, you know, you reshort the next greedy hold. So you, you simply just reshort this at that point or, or this one. You have two targets, right? But you see how triggers. Create your number one. So your number one yeah. has like this big marquee of information inside of it where it's like, okay, how do you see a number one being developed? Because that's crucial information. Because technically, your trade should exist until your number one is confirmed. Well, if you confirm a number one, then you're starting a cycle in the other direction. So how do you yeah. get out of this trade? Like even, even say you are right here. How can you get out of this trade before confirming accumulation? Right? So, so then you have to go into a larger time frame and do this. Right. So, so how that's the, that, that's the ultimate scenario. You enter a knife catch, right. And you're in this trade until a new cycle starts, right. Or, or, or here you're in, you're in a four hour short from here for, for some reason, right. You're in, you're in this short here, which clearly ladders to here. You're in that short there and you're in this until you start a cycle on this, right. So, so like the number one is key because your number one, which again, should just simply be this should try to create a cycle, which I believe when we worked it down, it was somewhere down here. Like we, we worked this down to the exact, I think it was a five minute chart or something like that. I believe it was like right here. Or it might have even been a little deeper. I know it hit the level to the T, like it, it literally touched it to the dollar. Yeah. It was, it was right there, right? So, so that's fine. Your number one is your ultimate target because your number one is your, like when you think about it, your number one is your greediest level. So your number one starts the cycle. And how do you see the cycle break, right? Well, you see a ladder created like so, like so, like so. And then you see your triggers get executed. So like a trigger is, if you continue to, to develop triggers, they start to bleed into higher timeframes, bigger information, just like everything we do. And, and you can see right now, like we said at 1021, if we keep moving sideways and we're not, so we technically wouldn't be out of this trade yet. We would still be in this trade because our number one has to confirm. This might not be the number one yet. Yeah, it was a good target, but it might not be the number one. So, so it's, it's like the balance between getting out when the number one is first developed yeah. right, before number two, because number, number two is going to be created off of here, like some, some higher level off of here. You don't want to take your exit on those higher levels because then you're going to be stuck in a trade from here and you're going to be riding this whole entire thing, right? Because yeah. you, can't, you can't exit here because you know number two just got created, which created your trend. So you have to go and exit down on this whole level. So you, you miss three or four trades. Accumulation. The three is up here accumulation to this accumulation, hard closes to that. You see, you haven't even broken, the, the green is the three. So the three minutes gonna break first, which is gonna confirm the five, which is gonna confirm the 15. So, so there's yeah, like really yeah. no reason here to get out. As a trigger point, if you're in, if you're in this from this short here, there's, yeah. no, there's no reason to get out yet because you just, you haven't, you haven't confirmed a break on yeah. anything. And best yeah. case scenario, what you've done is you've said, we have a 15 minute here. We have no card closes here. Best case scenario, you adapt this to here. But th this gives you more of a, like a, a point where your other time frames are breaking anyways, because you, you've massaged the 15 down to the three, but you, are, you already have a three to a three minute trend that's, that's holding here. You already have like a local three to three minute trend right here. You already have it and, and it's not. So if you were to flip this chart, if you were to flip this chart, you would say, oh man, holy crap, this is already tested. This is already tested. This one's tested. This is, this one is tested too. So th this range is actually tested here. This range is tested here. That range is tested there. Do we have like a really greedy spot here somewhere? No, actually we have this right here, which is the range is tested right here. So it's starting to become pretty polarized. So, so this really has to hold, which has to hold this, which has to hold this. So this here, that's a test right there. Cause that's testing the range on a different time frame, right? Like this is testing that range on a different time frame. Cause these two candles make up of one time frame. These two peaks up here, this, this, Range right here makes up of one time frame. So this this time frame, this range is already tested, right? So if, mm. if you start to lose this level here, you're kind of gone in this move. Like the same thing. Look, this range is tested here, right? Because you've got the backside here to the front side, which is just backside front side one minute, which is not something I'd say like go do. I'm just saying like this is a tested range. This range is tested. This is tested, and you have nothing left except for this little guy right here, which is like okay. So so that should be your target, and if, if that breaks. This range is already developed. You know, where are you going next? Like you, you've got, you know, another eight, another 1.6, possible four. Maybe, we'll see. 
So, so if you're talking about like trigger points, like to, to give some more light on trigger points, like you can even see right now, like even, even in this moment, you, you haven't stabilized this move yet. So, so using trigger points as an exit. Yeah. I like to, like I, I showed you guys earlier. If you've just hit the greediest hold, you have to realize that you can adapt one or two trends out. You just have to realize every time you adapt that trend, you're basically making a bigger time frame trend. So it's it's exactly what we kind of gone through here today, right? Understanding a cycle, you have to realize number one is the most important part of any cycle because number one is target. Like it always has been, always will be. Number one is the hold level it's going to hit before it breaks a trend. So number one is target. So you should either be exiting your short there or staying in until the cycle confirms. Like if you just kind of think of that after saying it out loud, it makes total sense. Oh, I'm in a short, we're moving down. Okay, whatever the final number one is, is clearly my target. Until that confirms, which is the, the, the break of the trend that hit that hold level, hit your number one, create a trend. When that trend breaks, why are you waiting until you create the next move up? Because once this trend breaks, it's going to go either here or here. And that gives you a trigger point, which is your number two. So you're getting out on number two, or you should be getting out on number one, right? Number one is a target. So that's going to be your maximum profits is number one in the cycle. That's maximum profits. Number two is your trigger point. So it's a decision between you have targets that are, un, uh, that are untested, greedy hold levels. So you have number ones that exist everywhere, right? So, so you either get out here or here, or you let your number ones touch and, and you, you allow your trend to break. And then you get out on your trigger point, right? Like, like right here, if this starts to hard close, trigger point confirmed. Three minute, just get out of the trade. And there's no reason to get out anywhere else uh, and, unless you have your target hit, which is feasible to say it's right here. Right. But then again, what's the problem here? What's the problem that we're creating right now with this, with all of this way too internal, way, way too internal. 15 to 15 is what we have. We should just let this like break and develop and just stay in this until it, it just continues to move us down. And then, and then you'd have something bigger even out here. Now I'm starting to say, okay, look, look, 1029, three minutes breaking, which means a 15 minute is going to develop over top. So this, this would be a good point to say, okay, if we do hard close here, if we go over this level, I'm out. Now we've justifiably exited this trade smartly. If we go over this level, I'm out. That's it. Because look, 10, 10, 29, you're breaking the three minute, which is setting up the next 15, which is, which is just going to bring you up to this point up in here or, or to this level here. So you can exit and reshort one of those two levels. Now I would say like, okay, look, 10, 29. Yeah, let's make a decision, but we cannot go a dollar over this level. Like you, you can't. You can go a little bit over and pull back, but there has to be a point where you say, okay, I'm taking my profits, right? Like you know, there has to be a point because you could say, oh, let's wait to see if it moves up. And then all of a sudden it's halfway up to the level. And then you can't leave because you're about to hit the level, which is going to pull you back to see if the, which, which is, you're just going to take your purple trend and array it out to here to where it touches, right? So like if it goes, either you have to pick a spot. Look, it just hard closed the three minute, which just developed the 15 minute. The 15 minute just opened over you've got a balance here between the 15 minute confirming and that whole level being touched right now. So you've either exited this trade here already on the trend break on the three or this, because now it's just going to, you know, cr create the number two, which is the trend. You could get even greedier and say, Oh, whatever this was holding, I'll go after. But again, why wouldn't you have just exited the three minute? Like, why are you waiting? Because now you're just developing a number two. So th that's how you're using trigger points, right? You're, you're using them and, and we, very easily with our time frames, justified it. Like, look, the three minute broke right here. Get out of the trade. If you want to be a little greedier, you can hit to here. If you want to be even greedier, you can hold to here. Like, you can do these things. But then I think you have to justify it on a bigger time frame trigger point because because really all we have is just like one candle to one candle. We haven't even really created the first piece of this move up, like this. Like, we, we haven't created this first swing to actually make an, a, a, like a real trend that can pull this thing down. So we are going to have a bit of a move up here, which might just be this, but I doubt it. But hey, maybe, right? Again, we don't have our larger trends here, so we can't even see larger trigger points because we could have an hourly trend that maybe comes, I don't know, maybe like this is the reach point. We're too internal to make that decision, but maybe you have like an hourly trend, something like this. I don't know. I, I didn't look. So, so you could have like a more exterior trigger point. It's possible. Like you're in this trade. So you have to justifiably exit somewhere. You have to either say, oh, target or trigger point, right? So because now you see how that works is, is all yeah. 
All targets yeah. are number ones somewhere else in a cycle. So if you break down a cycle, the number one is like a huge piece. It's, it's, it's all the hidden gold, right? Like it's, it's all your hidden gold and, and the realization between, okay, there will be a number one hit somewhere. If that is the perfect target, which it should be, because again, remember a number one is a knife catch on the extreme. So number one is always going to be perfect target. So if a number one is hit, what confirms the next cycle up? What can confirm we make a trend? We break that trend. We make a new cycle. We make that. We hit a, a, a higher hold level. We hold that. We break that, right? So you're just forfeiting profits over time and getting into less trades. So really like the key of, of finding a number one is breaking down a cycle, which is massive, right? And then the number two is your trigger point. So, so a number two, find your number three, which is created here, right? Because your number two is that trend. So that number two is your trigger point in a cycle. Because if, if, you, if, you, if you break that two, you're going to create a three. And once that three is created, you have to wait. You can't, you can't exit on number three, even, even if number three is up here, because it's going to pull back. Because what's a number three? A number three is, guess what? A number three is a ladder. So how can you exit number three? You have to wait for the pullback. But by the time you pull and pulling back, you could be holding a hold level here, which is creating your next piece of your cycle. But again, now you're just back into a higher time frame ladder. What if you came all the way up to here before Ladder, ladder, ladder. Because number threes are ladder points. Number three is a ladder. Number four is a ladder. Number five is a ladder. Number six is a ladder until it's unpolarized. And then there's no more ladder left, right? So you start breaking down a cycle in a very highly advanced way. And you start to see where it all makes sense with trigger points. Because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever it takes to break, realize that three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 29, 50, whatever. As far as it goes, guess what those are? Those are just untested holds before a final polarized moment. So number three is a ladder. Number four is a ladder. Number five is a ladder. Number six is a ladder. Number seven is a ladder. Number eight is a ladder until it reaches its final hold, right? The final hold of the move or the final untested level or the final untested hold, which is the polarized moment. So now you're into polarity. So a cycle, create the creation of a cycle, the entirety of a cycle is all the way from a knife catch, which is the greediest hold, which is created on number, number one. And number two is a trigger point. Number three to X, whatever that ends up being, are ladder points. And the final ladder point is polarization, which is just creating the move up, which breaks the cycle. Now you're in accumulation of distribution, right? So every piece of a cycle has a very specific meaning that we've already gone over, but then we don't fully understand them until, until we get like trigger. You can't, you can't really understand a cycle until you understand trigger point. You can't really understand yeah. those things until you understand triggers and ladders and greediest holds and, and et cetera, et cetera. So now you learn cycles, right? And, and how they really made. So your number one is your greediest point, right? So we first have to say like, okay, your number one is a greediest point, okay? The greediest point in the trade is going to be the move that holds the number one. So you have to start looking at what's polarized on what timeframes and what's bringing you there. So that, that's a bigger decision that we make from a higher time frame down, right? Like even, even here, you, you know, you, you rewind this to here. And if you were to uh, be in this trade here, you could say, okay, uh, I'm just going to take a short here lead everything. We're just going to say, okay, look, you've got this here. So you, so you entered there. This is tested here, right? Oh, that's tested. That range is tested here as well. So, so we could go down to here, right? Like this is the four hour. And, and again, we, we broke that down and, and found that the, you know, there's a level inside of here. So that, that's fine. Whatever this range is tested here. Once you have, you're, like you wouldn't be targeting this because this range is already tested. So you'd say, okay, there's a front side, back side hold in here. So we've broken this down to find the exact level. It's, it's a little lower than this. You know what? We'll just get it. Who cares? Backside's already tested. Let's go and test the greedy untested level, right? So I think it was like, and that's tested. That's tested. That's tested. That's tested. So I think it was something in here. Where's that four hour candle? I think this is outside of it. Yeah, it is. So we're just going to pin it to the bottom of this and find the greedy level above that. The greedy untested. Because the backside of the trend, it's already tested the backside there. That's tested. Tested. So from that moment prior. So that means it has to be this level. So it doesn't have a choice. It has to be this level. It can be also this. It has to be one of those two levels. It doesn't have a choice. If you're profit capping this, you, you have to pick a spot in that candle because it's just, I wonder if it's 12. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the part of the range that's breaking down 
from this latter point. So you, you, like you have to pick a level there. If you're profit capping this, you have to pick some type of level where you have a profit cap here. I don't think it would be right to, it wouldn't be terrible to hold it to here, but you have to expect a bounce here just as a ladder point. You could even go inside of this right here to here between this point here and this point here and, and find another untested range inside of this. You could do that, but you still have to profit cap your move somewhere. Like if you're entering this trade here, you have to say, where's the maximum profits? It has to be testing this somewhere. Like it has to be in here somewhere. So that's fine. We can use 8634. And, and then there would be another one here. We're not talking about trying to buy a level. We're trying to profit cap a short, right? So we're profit capping this. We're in this trade and it does hit that level because this has to be a profit cap. Profit caps of the move because you have to be able to give yourself a point where you're saying, okay, where's the perfect balance? That's dictated based on where you're entering, based on what information. Like, again, if you entered this whole level here, again, I, I'm sure there's, you know, deeper pieces. You have this right here. And then I'm sure there's another greedy level inside of this. So that's there. Find the greediest point, which is here, which is, makes sense. It's the latter point in that holds, and that's fine. And, and you, you might even have something even greedier that gives you even slightly better entry. No, you don't. That's it right there. That's the final ladder point right there. And then so that hits. And, and if you're in a short from here on this time frame, you have to say, okay, where can this thing possibly go? Because this range, right, once this breaks, you can use this as a range to, to, you know, your first profit cap can be here. It can be inside of this range. What will hold the move up? Right there. That's fine. You can profit cap right there, which gets tested, by the way, right here. So that's one piece of the profit cap. The next one has to go down to the next range of the move. So, so you, you know, you're, you're here, right? Which is laddered from here. So it can't be anything inside of this. It's already laddered here. Unless it, it could be like one little greedy hold level down here. It, it, it actually can be. That's fine. But that's not what I would first profit. That's where it could go. That's not where I'd profit cap this. So I would say this is your range. Can't be this. It could, it could be, but I wouldn't profit cap it there. I wouldn't take my trade there because it's going to bounce somewhere else. So, so now you're instantly above this. So you have to say, this trade is attacking this range because this is already hit right here. Like this part of the range is already hit. So, so it's, not, it's not going to go after that range. Next, it's going to go after this range, which if, if you look at it, can't go after that, can't go after that. There's untested levels protecting it. This is a four hour right here. So this has already been tested. This candle here has already been tested backside. The front side hasn't. So you have to look inside of here to profit cap it, to say what's your maximum profits. And then you just find the greediest point from the bottom of the candle, right? And, and then that's what we found is the greediest point. So then your profit cap exists from here to here. So, so your, your perfect scenario where you're finding your perfect number one is based on where the move is coming from and where you are in it from. If you are simply going and saying, okay, let's go to the hourly or even, even a lower time frame, 15 minute, whatever. Let's just find a hold level, right? Right here. There's a hold level. It gets touched. You have to look back here and say, okay, where's your profit cap? If, if you're hitting polarization, means this is already tested. So this one right here, right? Like you could be somewhere like this in here. Where's the level? Right there. And this looks like it's tested. So you've got this right here. So you can justifiably profit cap this from this point to this point because it exists on that time frame, right? You've got untested hold, which goes after it right here. Fine, it goes after the range versus untested hold, right? So, so you're, you're just using that time frame to dictate. But again, the four hour, you can see how that makes sense. You can see how the hourly makes sense. You could go to a five minute and see how that makes sense. Pick a random point. Sure, let's just use this one. I don't know, fine, perfect. Five minute point here gets touched. Let's delete everything else. Delete this, this, delete this. Take the replay tool to here, right? And you can say, okay, well, you could even start from back here and say, okay, well, fine. This is tested we move it here and that's tested. Yeah, right there, that's fine. So that's your bigger profit cap and then your other profit cap is right here. And I'm sure they both get hit. There's a first one, there's a second one. There's, the, oh, come on. There's the bounce off the first one, bounce off the second one, but it's justifiable. So, so the, your number ones where your perfect number ones are getting created are based on the decisions you've taken on that time frame.